Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this one, we're going to be taking a look at how to run the new 11.0 jailbreak for the PS4 using a Raspberry Pi instead of a computer to actually run the jailbreak. Now, what makes the Raspberry Pi better is the fact that it runs on Linux, which the actual jailbreak runs better when loaded from a Linux device than it does from a Windows device. You generally get less issues on Linux. So that's one advantage. The other advantage is the fact that obviously the Raspberry Pi is portable, so you can just have it permanently connected up to your PS4. And it also runs the jailbreak automatically. So whenever the, the exploit fails, because of course the jailbreak is not 100% uh, reliable, it might take multiple attempts, and the Raspberry Pi can just keep trying until it eventually jailbreaks the console. So it's really hands off once you have everything set up. It will just automatically jailbreak your PS4 for you. You just have to wait for it to do so. So that is one of the really big advantages here of using this method. Okay, so of course we're going to need a Raspberry Pi in order to do this. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4B, although it's also been tested and working on Raspberry Pi 3B+, Raspberry Pi 5, and Raspberry Pi 400. And it also works on the Raspberry Pi 02W and 0W. However, this jailbreak works by connecting an Ethernet cable between your PS4 and the device that's actually running the jailbreak. So in order to do that, you are going to preferably want a Raspberry Pi that has an Ethernet port on it. And the Raspberry Pi 0W and 2W do not have an Ethernet port. So you would need a, a USB to Ethernet adapter as well if you are using one of those Raspberry Pis. And also those are much slower at running the jailbreak. So you're gonna have to wait for longer to get your PS4 jailbroken if you're using one of those Raspberry Pis. So it's definitely recommended to use a 3B+, plus, a 4B, a 5, or a 400, rather than a 02W or 0W. So anyway, once you've got your Raspberry Pi, we also want to get ourselves a micro SD card for the operating system. And of course, an SD card reader to connect up to your computer so you can get the operating system on there. And of course, a Ethernet cable as well to connect between the Raspberry Pi and the PS4. Okay, so to get things set up, first of all, we need to connect our micro SD card that we're going to be using for our Raspberry Pi. We're going to connect that up to our computer with our SD card reader. And then from there, we're going to head to the GitHub repo, which will be linked in the description. So this is the repo for this project for the Raspberry Pi by Stooged. So we want to go to the code and download it as a zip file. We also want to then go to raspberrypi.com slash software and download the Raspberry Pi imager. So Raspberry Pi imager, download for your uh, platform. And then from there, make sure you just run the installer and get that program installed. So from here, I've extracted the project out to my desktop and I've got the Raspberry Pi imager. So what we're going to do is double click on the Raspberry Pi imager. We're going to choose a device. The device is, of course, going to be your Raspberry Pi model. So pick your Raspberry Pi model here. In my case, I have a 4B, so I'm going to select Raspberry Pi 4 as the Raspberry Pi model. Then we're going to choose the operating system. So we're going to click on that. We're going to go to Raspberry Pi OS Other, and we're going to select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. Make sure it is that version that you are using. So Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. Going to select that option then we're going to choose our storage device which is going to be our micro sd card so select that right there and then click next so then you'll get a message that will pop up saying would you like to apply os customization settings yes you definitely do so click the edit settings option here and then we want to set a host name so this is a way that we're going to be able to access the raspberry pi because we're going to want the raspberry pi to automatically connect to our home network so that it can be accessible on our local network. And we will it will be assigned a random IP address by DHCP uh, from your router. So we won't know what the IP address is to access it. So we'll access it using this host name. So right now it's set to raspberrypi.local. We're gonna change that. I'm gonna call this ps4exploit.local instead. Then we're going to go to set a username and password. I'm just going to set the username to modded and the password to A. And then we can configure wireless LAN. It will probably enter the SSID of your uh, of the wireless device that you're currently connected to on your computer. So in my case, I want to change it to the 2.4 gigahertz version rather than the 5 gigahertz version. So yeah, just enter the normal 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi SSID for your 
for your network, your normal home network, so it can connect to it. And then enter the password to the network here as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter the password for my Wi-Fi network and get that entered in there so it can connect to my network. I'll set locale settings, I guess, to my country. And then that's pretty much it. So from there, we can go to services and make sure you enable SSH and we'll just use password authentication. So with that, we can hit save and then click yes to apply custom settings and yes to continue. So now we're just going to wait for this to write uh, the operating system onto the Raspberry Pi. OK, so while that's busy writing to the Raspberry Pi, the next thing we want to do is get the gold hen payload on the root of a USB drive. So to do this, we're going to go into the Pipone main folder here and we've got the USB drive folder. If you go in there, you've got this goldhen.bin file and you just want to copy that to the root of a USB drive. So I've got this USB drive here. If I right click and go to properties, you want to make sure that USB drive is in XFAT or FAT32 format. So with that, we can go into this USB drive and copy the goldhen.bin file into the root of this USB drive. Do not rename this file. Make sure you just leave it as it is and just copy it to the root of the USB drive. Do not put it in any existing folders that you might have on that USB. So from there, we can go ahead and eject that uh, USB drive. Let's just make sure we're ejecting the correct one and not the one for the Raspberry Pi. And then from there, we can go ahead and plug that USB drive back into our PS4. So with that done, you can see we're finalizing and we've now written the Raspberry Pi operating system onto the SD card. So we can click continue and close out of the Pi imager. OK, so now that that's done, we're going to unplug our SD card from our computer and just plug it back into the computer again. And that should allow it to detect the boot FS partition. So if we go to this PC, you can see it detects the boot FS partition from the SD card. So we're going to go in there and open up our PyPone folder again. And we're going to copy this PPPWN folder into the boot FS partition on our SD card. So we're just going to copy it in here. So you can see we now have the folder inside. So now that's on the SD card, we can eject the SD card again. And this time we're going to plug it into our Raspberry Pi. OK, so now we need to set up the Raspberry Pi with our PS4. So you want to grab a USB cable to power the Raspberry Pi and connect that up to the PS4 so that the PS4 is directly powering the Raspberry Pi. That way, whenever the PS4 turns off, the Raspberry Pi will turn off. And when it turns on, the Raspberry Pi will turn on and it will run the jailbreak. So we also want to connect an Ethernet cable between the Raspberry Pi and the PS4. So plug one end of the Ethernet cable into the Raspberry Pi and of course the other end into the Ethernet port on the PS4. OK, so next we want to set up the PS4. We're going to go into the settings and we're going to go to the network settings and we're going to connect to the internet and set up an internet connection. We're going to use a LAN cable and we're going to select a custom setup. And wait a few seconds. This always takes a few seconds. And then we're going to select PPPOE and then enter a random username and password or random user ID and password and then click next and then enter automatic, automatic and do not use proxy. And then you are good. So the PS4 is all set up and ready for the jailbreak. So now we just need to get the final configuration set up here on the Raspberry Pi to get things going. So what we want to do now with the Raspberry Pi powered, it should connect to our Wi-Fi network, our home network, and we should be able to access it over the network. So we're now going to open up Putty and I'll leave a download link to Putty in the description. We're going to type in the host name, which is going to be ps4exploit.local. And of course, the port is 22, connection type SSH. And we're going to click open. And that's going to try and reach the Raspberry Pi. And you'll get this horrible warning message, which is just to accept the local certificate. We're just going to accept it. And then we're going to type in our username that we created, which was modded and the password, which was A in my case. And there we are. We've now got remote access to our Raspberry Pi. So it's just two commands that you need to enter here. So chmod and then we're basically just giving permissions for the script to run and then running the script. So we're going to copy uh, those two commands there and then right click and paste those into putty and then press enter. And that is going to get everything up and running. 
Just give it a few seconds and it should reboot once this is finished. Okay, and there we go. Once it's done, you can see we've been kicked off because it is rebooting the system. Now that we have the Raspberry Pi set up and it's rebooting, I'm going to restart the PS4 just to show you what this is like from a fresh boot when you have the Raspberry Pi connected and everything is configured as it is right now. Okay, so we've rebooted the PS4 here. And now all we have to do is wait. That is the beauty of this solution. You don't have to mess around with anything. So you can see here when it says LAN cable not connected, that is the Raspberry Pi resetting the network interface so that it can then run the exploit. So every time you get a fail, you will see that message because it has to reset it to run the exploit again. And it will just keep doing this until it eventually works. So make sure you have the USB drive connected that has the gold hen payload on it if you're doing this for the first time. Uh, once the exploit loads successfully for the first time, it will actually copy that gold hen payload to the internal hard drive so that the next time you run the jailbreak you will not need to have that usb drive connected so the usb drive is only required for the first time loading the jailbreak after that point anytime you want to jailbreak it again you just need the raspberry pi connected and it will jailbreak the console for you so the better raspberry pi that you have the more powerful the raspberry pi the faster it will load the exploit the 4b takes about 70 seconds to load I'm sure the Raspberry Pi 5 will be a lot faster if you have one of those. Um, but the problem is that it runs through Python. So that was a failed attempt right there, as you can see. LAN cable not connected. It's trying again. So, yeah, the issue at the moment is that because the actual exploit script is coded in Python, which is notoriously slow, it doesn't run particularly fast on these lower powered devices like Raspberry Pis. So it does take a while to, it, you know, it does take a while to run the exploit. And therefore, whenever you have a failed attempt, it's quite a bit of time that you have to wait till it tries to load it again. So that is the one issue at the moment. If we can get some kind of working rewrite of the exploit in another language that's faster, like C, then yeah, time could be cut in half potentially for the, these attempts. And it also depends, of course, on the PS4 that you have as well. Some PS4s, it usually only takes one or two attempts and you can get the jailbreak running. Other PS4s like this one, can take a few more attempts normally this one's about anywhere from about three to five attempts most of the time and sometimes it can be even longer uh, which is unfortunate whereas my fat model ps4 actually usually only takes one or two tries so yeah anyway as you can see this is actually successful second time there we go our third time actually i believe and there it is it ran the jailbreak gold hen 2.4 b17 loaded so that is the beauty of this solution all you have to do is just set it and forget it. Turn on the console and then just wait for it to be jailbroken. And like I say, now that that's run once successfully, we don't need the USB drive anymore. The next time we run the jailbreak, it will just load the one from the internal hard drive. So there it is. We have the jailbreak fully up and running. We've got all of our gold hen settings showing up here and we are fully jailbroken. So of course, I'm not going to go over how to set up the gold hen settings and you know, get everything set up and installed and the homebrew store and all of that stuff because I went over that in my previous tutorial which shows you how to jailbreak the console using a computer to send the exploit instead of a Raspberry Pi. So if you want to learn how to get fully set up with Gold Hen and get your jailbreak fully configured, I recommend heading back to that video there which I'll leave down in the video description which will show you how to get the jailbreak up and running to its full potential. So that is it for this one. This is how you can use a Raspberry Pi to easily jailbreak your PS4. Now it does take a little bit to get things up and running and you do need a few different things but once you have it all configured it's really simple. Just turn on your PS4, wait for it to be jailbroken. You don't have to do anything else. So anyway that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did please leave a like and subscribe and once again I will hopefully see you guys in the next video.